Hello everybody, welcome to Walls Wheels and welcome to the final episode in the July Rewind series where I upload videos of shows and events which I didn't upload at the time of recording. Now this video style is going to be a little bit different to the previous episodes you'll have seen as it will likely be a very talkative one. And for anybody who's seen my previous videos, you'll know that I'm not the chattiest bloke to ever have walked the face of the earth. In this particular video, I recall my 2019 International Mini Meat Experience which took place at Washington Farm in Easter Compton near Bristol in the southwest of England. IMM then, 2019, 60 years of the Mini, over 5,000 Minis and their associated human and canine... Ca uh, no, take two. IMM 2019 then, 60 years of the Mini, over 5,000 Minis and their associated human and canine passengers would be attending from all over Europe and further afield. Some groups incoming from South Africa and Chile in South America. This event was going to be huge. The weather had been superb in the weeks leading up to the event too, so with such a big celebration, the buzz of a summer car event was high in the mini scene. All over the forums and Facebook group, people were getting hyped for the... No. Take three. IMM 2019 then. 60 years of the Mini, over 5,000 of their associated human and canine passengers would be attending from all over Europe and further afield, from places such as South Africa and Chile in South America. Yes, people really came from that far away. Uh, this event was going to be huge, and the weather had also been superb in the weeks leading up to the event too, so with such a big celebration, the buzz of a summer car show event was high in the Mini scene. All over the forums and Facebook groups, people were getting hyped for this. Especially the mini-based magazines, and of course, mini themselves. Now for this event, I'd worked hard to get the mini ready. I'd bought it in March of 2019 and did my first long trip to British Mini Day at Himley Hall in May. Uh, that's where I learned that it suffered from some fairly large cooling issues on long journeys, shall we say. And it needed to stop every so often just to cool down a little bit. Uh, this was not something the previous owners knew about when I bought the car as they'd only really used it for short journeys. Long story short, the radiator was clogged with gunk as well as having a leak, so I bought the Fletcher Twin Core Alloy Radiator that sits in it now, which you'll probably see in my My Mini Mods video. Uh, if you're going to replace it, obviously why not upgrade it at the same time? When I upgraded this, however, it opened up a can of worms and meant that other various pipes and gaskets were now under pressure they hadn't experienced for ages and ages, and being old too, they let go, which of course was rather disappointing. Uh, so I bought some new rubber hoses and gaskets and had them all replaced and checked over by a mechanic, and I even had a tow bar fitted to tow a trailer for camping gear before travelling to the event. The Mini by now was ready. The trailer the Mini was going to tow on the other hand, however, was not ready by any means necessary at all. A little bit of backstory for it, my dad had built this in 1984 to transport various car parts around in when just restoring his MGB GT at the time. And the vehicle that would be towing the trailer with all the associated parts in it would be a 1970s Morris Mini. Uh, the wheels and driving hubs on the trailer are made from a scrap Mini, so this was obviously done in the 80s when minis were more disposable and throwaway cars back then. Uh, so really, with the trailer being made of mini parts and basically being made to be towed by a mini, it was almost the ideal companion for my mini for IMM in its own way. Obviously along with the extra practicality it provided. Uh, it had received a minor refresh in the late 90s, roughly around 1999, with new wood and new paint which by 2019 was starting to wear. The main wooden body was going rotten in places and the metal worked rusty. Luckily for me, however, it was only surface rust, but still a little and it looked a little bit shabby. I purchased some new wood for it, cut it all up, chiseled, drilled, plane it into shape, you name it. And I also put the angle grinder to work to grind away the rust and sprayed it Hammerite Smooth Blue, which funnily enough is remarkably similar to the Rover Henley Blue that the Mini is. So, in that way, it was a perfect match. Obviously I wanted them to match, but that really couldn't have worked much better now, could it? I then reassembled it all back together over the course of about a week between working hours before that too was finally ready to go to Bristol. I'd also invited my friend Chris to join for this four day action packed adventure mind? to Bristol involving many many minis, which for us to travel would be a little over an hour and a half at mini speeds. Obviously yes, they're not fast in stock form unless of course you happen to have a Cooper S. 
Chris joined me in the evening before we were set to make this perilous hour and a half journey so we could load up the car and the trailer with camping gear as well as all the other accessories. Uh, along with the trailer being done up to look, you know, pretty damn smart, Chris had got some special decals made up just for the event which we then put on the car the next morning. This could be sped up in the edit. Yeah. Everyone's going to like, why is he putting on with his hand? He's going to have air bubbles in it. I can see my reflection in it. It's the good stuff. Which means secretly he's a bit rubbish. So if you come over here. Oh. It's a bit of footage for us. It's 30 seconds long for us. Oh. Oh. No air bubbles. Going back to the mire, people. With the gear loaded up and the car looking suitably decorated, Things were going well, tunes were blasting out of the stereo, the engine note was sounding rorty and the trailer was sitting behind neatly causing no problems whatsoever. About an hour into the journey we arrived in the pretty but hilly Somerset city of Bath, called as such because of its Roman baths. Things in the Mini were still going well, slow but well. We'd seen a couple of other Minis, old and new, going to Bristol here too, who all gave a friendly two to the horn, a wave or a rev and a showing of solidarity. IMM, here we all come. As we got out of Bath, however, on a dual carriageway, <laughs> of course, uh, that's when problems arose. A big cloud of steam erupted out of the bonnet. <laughs> that's not normal, is the polite way of uh, saying thoughts at the time, to say the least. Uh, we managed to quickly find a small, quiet side lane to park up just outside of Virg. I'm not quite sure which one off the top of my head here. And we managed to quickly survey the cause. We've been here for five hours waiting for a recovery truck because this decided to piss all of its coolant out. Look at that. Marcus Tatum. It has. Good at looks. Even broken here. We quickly found the source where coolant by this point was dribbling out with no immediate sign of damage to the parts. I wanted to cool a little whilst gathering thoughts on what could be done to repair this problem at the roadside. We discovered that the bypass hose had split on the seam. The bypass hose had basically exploded roughly 25 minutes away from the event and as this was a brand new part replaced only the week before, I didn't feel like it would let me down. I hadn't got any suspicions about the hose before this instance, even if I did I would not have been able to get a spare with me due to the traders gearing up for IMM themselves and all doing deliveries to the event rather than to your door. I will say it looked quite dramatic, but at least the car didn't overheat, which of course is obviously not a very good thing in any way, shape or form. Either way, with this hose broken, the car was going nowhere. I phoned up my breakdown company, who I'm not going to name this story, who sent out one of their engineers in a patrol van who arrived about two hours later. Uh, there was the typical hellos and where were we heading, you know, polite conversation, that kind of thing. Uh, the engineer had a look and quickly established the same that we had. At least mine and Chris's diagnosis was correct, I suppose. Uh, this is where the day got arguably worse. Yeah. For context, for those who aren't familiar, the bypass hose is roughly about 5cm long with a 2cm internal diameter. Essentially, a small bit of garden hose could have repaired it if push came to shove. Anyway, this van hadn't got a single bit of hose on board. It's not that it didn't have a hose that wouldn't fit. It just didn't have any hoses on board at all, which at the time I thought was a little, uh, a little rubbish. I get the patrol vans and their operators are not always 100% in sync as vans obviously go from job to job without stopping for parts in between, but still, come on. I couldn't possibly be the only one in the world who needed a 5cm bit of pipe, right? Not to mention that I described and named the part that failed on the phone. 
There was much back and forth between myself and the engineer about where on earth the Mini could be repaired at such short notice as the part is not easily or commonly available nowadays. By pure chance, would you believe it, there was a big event for Minis being held about 25 minutes away in Bristol where all of the Mini based traders would be. <laughs> Who would have thought that, right? I made the decision to have the Mini taken to IMM. There would almost certainly be at least one trader with one bypass hose there and if not with 5,000 other Minis showing up. One person there would surely you know, be willing to exchange their bypass hose for money or alcohol, wouldn't they? We are all going there to have an enjoyable weekend after all and as a mini community, when things go wrong, mini owners help other mini owners out. By this point things were sort of looking a bit more up. We had a plan. However, the irritating afternoon didn't stop there. No. <laughs> To add insult to injury, the engineer then tells me that my trailer might not be covered by the policy and that the trailer cover was an extra £10. I asked at the time, if needs be, can that be paid here and now? No, was the response. So what use is it telling me that then? If it wasn't covered, what was I meant to do there and then? Leave it in the middle of nowhere filled with various camping equipment? Although there was obviously no response from the engineer to this, there was the feeling of, it's not my problem. Now, I get saying all this, you know, when we're about an hour into the journey, I could always have called somebody to come out and, you know, retrieve the trailer for me, but that's not the point. If I was about five hours from home, things could have been very, very different on that front. Either way, I was livid by this point. My breakdown company had arrived with no tools to do the job, despite being notified of the problem, and then told me that the trailer might not be covered. The policy even clearly stated tonight that small trailers were indeed covered and that was the real middle finger to the whole situation. The engineer left telling us that he had notified the operators to find a recovery service. We spent the afternoon car spotting and seeing other minis heading to the same place as us as well as having locals drive by offering to bring us cups of tea and other drinks. Obviously we'd been sat there for quite a while so they of course were just being very very kind and for that if any of you are watching I'm eternally grateful because that was really very kind of you. Several as well as that also offered to help out if at all possible but of course it's kind of hard with that really. Anyway, the recovery truck arrived three and a half hours after initial breakdown. The driver, the recovery truck arrived about three and a half hours after the, you know, the patrol engineer had left basically. Uh, the driver had only been notified of us about an hour beforehand. By this point we've been stuck on the roadside for six hours in the blazing sun. At least we had chairs in the trailer I was supposed to sit down on. The driver though was quite possibly the most helpful human being we could ever have hoped for. He loaded up the trailer and the car on board and we were underway once more. Huzzah! On the way in the truck we went on the M5 and about 10 minutes away from the event we saw a German registered Wolseley Hornet which had evidently over uh, On the way in the truck, we went on the M5 and about 10 minutes away from the event, we saw a German registered Wolseley Hornet, that's basically a Mini with a boot for those of you who don't know, which had evidently overheated whilst pulling a very dinky teardrop caravan, which of course was sat on the hard shoulder. Traffic on the M5 was at a crawl, so the driver offered through the window to take them there once he dropped me and Chris off at the event. The Wolseley, however, was cool enough by this point and managed to actually get stuff up and followed us into the event, literally the car behind us on the motorway and everywhere else. We went straight in and through our breakdown as well. Uh, no. We went straight in and because, you know, we were bringing in essentially a huge lorry into the event, the organisers wanted to sort of get rid of it as quickly as possible. So we got in and managed to actually avoid about three hours worth of queuing to get into the event which i suppose given the circumstances of the day that was a very minimal win the german Wolseley, however on the other hand had to obviously queue so i'm not sure which of us actually got the best deal out of that to be perfectly honest um, we found our camping field rehitched the trailer and instead of starting the mini up to drive the short but slow journey to the field as this obviously wasn't a good idea with no coolant in it at all Chris pushed whilst I steered. Stormy. The mini community at this point though shone through with a few other bystanders helping to push it to the field in with alcohol in their hands.
<laughs> so, the car's broken, and Chris so is I'm pushing it. That's events for you, isn't it, though? <laughs> this was a definite highlight of the day, of course. The weather that night, however, sort of uh, never left the site for the rest of the weekend, really. I was awoken at about 4am by thunder, lightning, rain, wind, you name it. Pretty much all of the rubbish weather conditions you can possibly have, apart from snow. Still... I was nice and dry in my tent, unlike Chris, who, as it turned out, was not, as I found out the next morning. That's quite funny, seeing him wake up in a big puddle of rain. <laughs> I don't usually like to laugh at others' misfortune, but in this case, when it's your friend, everything's just funny, and it was really stupid as well, so... I had a good laugh about it, I don't think he did at the time, but uh, he looks back on it and laughs about it now. <laughs> so, anyway. On with the story, our challenge for the next morning was to go and find the trade stands to find a new hose for the Mini. Every single trader, as it turned out, had at least one bypass hose, so we picked up three from three different traders, and we went back to the Mini to repair it. We had a gazebo to work under, which, as it turned out, was quite lucky, as most of the weekend was just wet, rainy, windy... Yeah. I will say, despite the fact we did have a gazebo, it didn't stop us from getting soaked because the wind was actually driving the rain almost vertically and yeah, you can picture it, can't you really? Anyway, the old hose was off the car and with the new one on, after topping it up with water, the Mini was back up and running once more. Finally, some good news. Luckily for us, this turned out to be a relatively easy fix. The event was incredibly wet and due to the cameras not being weather protected at all, I didn't film all that much. However, we did go around and had a look at many of the other minis in the brief dry spells that we had. For this event we joined the mini forum group for camping who were all very kind and welcoming and offered tools to help repair the mini with as well as offering food all throughout the whole weekend. So here are their minis in various grades of shininess to sort of show our appreciation for letting us join their group as well as offering the tools and things that obviously we needed at the time to repair the Mini. Right, -o. let's go. Good. Hi everyone, welcome to Bristol IMM, International Mini Meet for those of you who don't know. So we're currently in the Mini, it's looking very white in here as you can see. Outside very white as well. Yes. This is Chris, Chris joined me. Hi, I'm the mechanic. And he's Chris. And yeah, in a minute we're going to show you some of the minis around on our little camping pitch. Someone just tried to steal our trailer. So they did. Anyway, let's go out and have a look, shall we? You get out. No. Here's how you lock a mini from the inside. We'll get our endorsement in, bro. We also took the Mini for a short spin around the fields to see what others had brought along to the event. Skipping after effects is a uh, stabilization, right?
chop and change this clip, I hope you don't mind. Go through film one if you want. Yeah, give it a quick run through. Yeah. I've got an idea. Yeah. It's an idea you might not like. Carry on talking, I'm going to cut all the audio out of this anyway. Okay, so what I'm thinking of doing... taken us until Saturday to actually be able to film anything. Even then it's still not not raining. Wait, was that what I think it was? What? Oh my god, look at it! Wow, this field is fucking dead now. Oh, really? straight into it. Hopefully not.
The people, as with most things, made the event awesome. The bands play music on stage late into the night. The local signers to try the shows they had going on, such as Show and Shine, Glow Show, 60th Birthday Party, and the show. As well as... no. Take two. Now that the Mini was running, we also took it for a short spin around the fields to see what others had brought along to the event. The people, as with most things, made the event awesome. The bands played music on stage late into the night. No. Take three. As the Mini was now up and running again, we thought we'd take it for a short spin around the fields to see what others had brought along to the event, as well as sort of giving it a quick test just to make sure nothing else had gone wrong when the uh, hose had exploded. <laughs> the people, as with most things, made the event awesome. The bands playing music on stage late into the night, the local side to try. The shows they had going on, such as Show and Shine, Glow Show, 60th Birthday Party, and obviously the show that went with it, as well as Rocker Cover Racing, along with the friends and memories made over that wet weekend in August 2019. It made it a really fantastic experience overall, I have to say. The weather was really rubbish though, and the breakdown. To sum up the event then, the weather was absolutely dreadful, the journey there was rubbish due to the breakdown, but the experience was fantastic and I'd go to another IMM in the future. Being surrounded by thousands of people from all over the world who are all there for one reason and one reason alone, their cars. It's just a fantastic experience and if you are a car person, no matter what you own, find a group to enjoy an event like that with because it is seriously good fun. And that's it, today is the 31st of July, meaning that July Rewind is complete. I hope you've enjoyed these recollections of previously unuploaded shows, events and days out as much as I have had, obviously looking back at a time pre-pandemic. Let's hope we can all get back to doing more of these kinds of shows in the not too distant future. I know I've got my fingers crossed. I've tried doing different styles of video with this series to keep things different and unique, so... Which of these video styles have you enjoyed the most? Let me know it down in the comments below and I might produce more in these different styles in the future. Thank you for checking out Wool's Wheels July Rewind. Please consider leaving a big blue thumbs up if you like this video. Comment down below to initiate a chat. And of course, subscribe for more of this kind of content to come. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Farewell.